Hello and welcome back to the fourth episode of Building Our Race Car. My name's Rob. And I'm Mike. And before we go any further with this one, I've got a little bit of a surprise for Rob. Seeing as how the last episode he reached his level 10 mechanics, oh, oh, oh. I've got him a little surprise. <laughs> and he hasn't actually seen this yet, so this is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, yes. Hello. Tool set. My own tools. <laughs> Let's get to work. Okay, so in today's episode, we're going to be checking out a couple more parts that we purchased recently. But the main goal of today is to build the bulkhead section, which is like the dash area of the car. Yeah, so that's mostly going to involve some square section that we've got. It's going to be the same thickness as the chassis itself so we can run it alongside the lines of it and then that's going to house the actual dash panel itself, the steering wheel, we'll have to make a bracket for that and then on the other side of that, on the engine side, we'll have a few bits that will end up bolting against that side of it. Uh, but first we'll show you what parts we've got. Let's check them out. This first one is a fuel pump, it's just an inline fuel pump. This is a spare one that I actually had kicking around the workshop, so we're going to see whether or not it will work and line up, but it might not, but if so, we can get the right one afterwards. Uh, and then this one, which is a bit more important, is the swirl pot. So fuel comes in the top, the outlet is at the bottom, at the lowest point. This is basically just designed so that when you're doing hard cornering or long corners, and you get the G-force stacked on the side, so you don't get any fuel starvation problems, pretty much. So fuel's always at the bottom, it's always supplying the engine with fuel. Even if the tank itself, where you have fuel sloshing around, sometimes you'll get little points where the fuel doesn't quite get sucked up and into this. This just keeps you an extra bit that's permanently down there. So the other thing that we got is an alternator. Now, we did actually go and do a little bit of uh, research on this by going to Silverstone and speaking to some of the guys that have already built the cars. And what we found out is something really important, and that you need a Mazda Mark 1 1.6 alternator, not the 1.8. Okay, so some of the best advice that we can give you, um, that if you're interested in a certain race series, then go and meet the guys that have already built the cars in that series because they've already made a lot of the mistakes and by talking to them, spend as much time as you can talking to them, you can actually pick up a lot of the knowledge that they've already acquired and prevent you from making the same mistakes that they probably already did before. So it'll help you out massively in the long run. The last part that we got is a pipe across performance air filter. It's just like your standard cone air filters. We do have to get a pipe section for it to, uh, so it fits onto the throttle body. But we'll look at that at some point in the future. Um, for now, let's go check on Mike and make sure that he hasn't cut anything that he shouldn't have. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't see there. I was uh, just drinking my A racing cup. Well, that'll be coming soon. All right, so as we mentioned before, everything we're doing on this car when we're building it all, uh, and the person who originally built the chassis would have built it to the specs for this book, uh, the how to build a car, is nowhere near 250 quid anymore, that's for sure. But this was in like the 80s, I think it was. Um, so these cars are all built for the low cost race series with the 750 Motor Club. Obviously ours is gonna be in the Mazda one, which is the second series for it, but we've still got to make a few extra bits on there. So you follow a lot of the instructions in there. They're not all amazing and everyone builds these cars slightly different. We're following it as best we can. Uh, so we've cut these tubes up here. So these are gonna roughly be in place. And we'll clamp them down, get them tacked up just so that they stay in that position. And then we've got this stenciled out already. And that's roughly gonna go behind there. We'll weld that to that, and then we've got to get a sheet of metal that goes all the way across and shape that right as well. And then on the back side of this will be the bulkhead part that we're on about where we're going to bolt some stuff to it from this side. And then in this side will be the dash and the steering wheel roughly around here somewhere.
one of the other things we've learned about the engine and putting the engine in into the chassis from last weekend of seeing all the other old guys at the club meeting. A lot of people are having problems with with this bar here hitting against the starter solenoid. So the position of the engine can sometimes end up out of line or quite far out of line to the side. We've managed somehow to get ours to line up and that does fit. It's very, very close, but it does fit. We think we might have put our engine in just a little bit lower, so we'll see how that affects us a bit later on. And then the second thing that quite a few people have done is when you put your clutch pedal box, and your, well, that's the clutch pedal there, and the cylinder for the back of it, if that was straight in line, I'll move it out of the way for you, you find that it does hit against the clutch release arm. So what we've done is trimmed the side of our pedal box down and we're going to have ours just as far over as we can. You can still get to the accelerator pedal fine and that then does clear it. The op other option for that is to have a, a top mounted clutch system, which quite a few people have gone with. We're going to try that, we'll see how we get on with it and you'll find out in a future video whether it works or not. <laughs> All right, so as you've just seen, and we've been talking about, we've been in the workshop trying to cobble together some metal bits to make some sort of resemblance of a dash. While we were in there, we thought we'd throw together with this little plate that goes on the back of the, uh, the pedals here. We'll just bring it down. We've got ours, like I said before, moved over as far this way as we can, mostly so that when you swing around the back, we'll just get our light on it down here. This is your clutch cylinder, and then this is the clutch release arm. And ours does clear, just because we say we've got it moved so far over, just to give it that extra little bit of room. Now the, the mole grips are just there to make sure this stays in place, because we've been sat in the car with our feet just coming down here, making sure that we can work the pedals their full range. We'll obviously support the bottom of this, uh, and just get your feet in there working all the pedals to make sure that everything works. And even with our big feet, big feet, big fat trainers, <laughs> Compared to your race boots, your race boots are normally really slim, so you've got loads more room than you need to be honest, and this is loads more room than a lot of race cars to be fair. So yeah, so that all works well. And then once we've finished off with the dash pit, we'll come back and get that thrown on top as well. So as you might have noticed that uh, episode 4, this episode, has taken a bit of time to finish off and get uploaded to the YouTube channel, which we've got to apologise about, but we've had a lot of stuff going on lately. Mike has been racing a classic car around Silverstone, which we filmed and will be coming soon, and I've uh, been racing a Saxo in an autocross competition, which is my first ever race, which also we filmed and which will also be uploaded to the channel soon. Next episode in the build, we've got a couple of new things. One of them wiring. Lots and lots of plugging in things. And then, which we'll probably do that second, this is gonna be a headache of enough. Sorting out the roll cage. So we've got all these random bars with different sizes and different bends delivered, and we just gotta throw them together and resemble some sort of thing that will stop us from getting our heads kicked in and we roll it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and make sure to look out for the next few videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Wiring. Done.